mother ah. Hello everybody. This is not the beginning of the video. I'm actually interrupting that right now. So very sorry, but I just wanted to quickly interject myself, interrupt myself, and just tell you guys that I actually filmed this to go out yesterday, Sunday, but some things got away from me. Time just left and I did not get it out yesterday. So I'm getting it up today, Monday, but all the stuff that I'm saying, like the weekend and this coming week was all meant for yesterday. So I knew that was going to be confusing. So I thought I'd just jump in here real quick and just let everybody know why I'm saying those things. It's because I meant for this video to go out yesterday. Yeah, no more rambling. Let's uh, get on with the video. Enjoy. Man, I tell you this sucks. I cut my thumb today. You guys ever cut your fingers like right along the fingernail? It's the worst. About the only thing that's worse I can imagine than cutting your finger along the nail is like getting a paper cut in the webbings of your fingers. Just enough to drive you nuts. Luckily here I got my little friend that's decided to come back for the summer. I tell you it was a glorious day when I figured out these guys had returned. I went into the store not expecting to be blessed with such a treat. I see a little pyramid stacked nicely in the back there with like a spirit coming from the bottle saying, Mike, take me home. Take me home and put me on ice and enjoy me for days to come. I tell you I bought about six or eight cases of this stuff. Mm. It does not get better than the Baja, I tell you what. Mm. What is happening guys? Mike here, welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone's having a great weekend. I know I sure am, as you can probably already tell, but I am very glad to be back with you guys here for a brand new review and to have all you fine people here checking out this brand with me here today. I really hope you guys will enjoy this video. We got some cool stuff to run through today with a brand that actually you guys have highly requested here on the channel and one that I've been testing out frequently over the past couple weeks. It should make for a pretty cool review. So without further delay, this is my review of Kinsfolk Grooming and it starts right now. All right, so for those that have never heard of Kinsfolk Grooming, they are an Australian brand led by Mr. Trent McLennan. Their interesting story actually starts with the brand being formed under the former name of Swagger Beards in 2014. They started obviously with beard care products, as you can tell by the name, and a really cool fact about that brand is they were even featured in GQ. Seeing the need though to expand and go beyond beard items, the brand converted over to Kinsfolk Grooming and began producing handmade styling products. Now fast forwarding to today, this brand offers in total four different styling products and they actually still offer other items for the skin and beard as well. And today I had planned to give you a look at three out of the four styling products, but there ended up being an issue with one of them, the King's Clay. There was a batch issue that altered the performance, so I wasn't able to actually give you guys an accurate look at that product. But I have been told that a replacement is on the way along with some other products from the brand, so I'll have the opportunity to bring you guys that one and some other products from this brand in a future video. But today we do have two more products from this brand to look at and get you some info on. So let's get started on that. Here we go. Coming across my desk today is a clay and a styling cream from the Australian brand Kinsfolk Grooming. Defining the modern man with ageless style. This is the motto behind this handmade product creator. Connecting this motto to the products is as easy as looking at their jars. But what is going on inside those jars? That is obviously the most important thing that we're going to find out today, starting with the matte clay. According to the brand, the Kinsfolk matte clay is a water-soluble styling clay that is enriched with avocado oil, bentonite clay, and Australian kaolin clay. It offers a light to medium hold, matte finish, and a coffee type scent. Package wise, it comes in a three ounce plastic jar for approximately 1668 US. Looking inside the jar, we're met with a pretty typical appearance for a clay. The product itself has somewhat of a thick look to it, but it actually scoops out fairly easy. Breaking it down is pretty much the same too, with it being on the thicker side, but also nice and soft in the hand. Next up is the styling cream. According to the brand, the Kinsfolk styling cream was designed to offer the styling experience of a traditional pomade, but with the benefits of a water-based formula. It offers a medium to firm hold, medium shine, and nourishment for the hair and scalp. Scent-wise, we're looking at a blend 
of cedarwood, patchouli, peppercorn, clove, cinnamon, amber, and white musk. It's actually a very nicely blended scent. Just like the clay, this product comes in a three ounce black plastic jar, but this one has a slightly higher price tag of approximately $18.95 US. Looking inside the jar, we're met with somewhat of a typical unorthodox water-based looking product. Looking at the product, it's also pretty much what we're used to seeing for a product of that type. It's got somewhat of a smooth, spongy consistency, but of course it's slick and creamy on the breakdown. Moving on now to the demos, starting with the matte clay. Now I've tested this clay a few different ways and for me it worked the best on dry hair. The instructions on the jar itself says to use it in towel dried hair, but I didn't really find that to work well for me. Adding this into my hair, it's got that thick but slick consistency, but it's not tugging or pulling at all, which is nice. Adding it into the hair too, I feel like it gives off a sheen that is almost dampening. This controls the hair nicely without being too sticky, but I'm not yet seeing that matte finish. Finger combing was super easy here. Using a comb is also actually pretty easy here, but I was going for a bit of a messier look here, so I stuck with just using my phalanges for this one. Styling here overall wasn't bad at all, and it didn't actually take long to achieve a good final style. Now let's reset the hair real quick so we can get a look at the cream. This one could easily be done on damp or dry hair, but here I'm going with dry. And before you get all worked up, let me show you why. As I apply the product to my hair, take a look at what happens. It definitely gives off that overall dampening feel. So for me, it really didn't matter whether the hair is dry or damp to start, since in the end, it's going to look and feel damp anyway. I mean, there are very minor differences and I'll go over those later in the video, but you guys get what I mean here. It didn't really matter what I started with. Using a comb here is just as expected, super easy. It glides and sculpts with so much ease and it takes no time at all to achieve a good final style. To be honest with you guys, I just don't really see the point in using the clay on damp hair here. There's really nothing in its application that tells me that it needs to go in damp hair or any particular benefits that I see that would come from using it in damp hair. For the cream, I also don't really think that it matters that much. Like I said, it ends up looking wet anyway. But when I did use it on dry hair, I do think I got just a tiny bit more hold out of it than on damp. But on the other hand, I think you got more shine on damp hair. So either way, I just don't really think it matters that much. Endurance wise, I do think these two had some pretty interesting results. The matte clay at the four hour mark seems fairly unchanged. It's holding up actually quite well. At the eight hour mark, I think it's pretty much the same too, with just some slight visible holding loss or just a tiny bit of deflation. But it does restyle very easily, which at eight hours is pretty good. For the cream, the results are very similar. At four hours, there's only some slight holding loss on the sides there. And at the eight hour mark, there's also just some slight deflation going on there. I do think this one had a slightly harder time restyling, but overall it wasn't too bad. For the washout here, it's actually really easy to describe. They both needed shampoo for me. Neither of them wanted to come out with just water, and they both needed a good hit with a heavy cleanser to come out of my hair. Pretty straightforward. Now for the scent, I'm going to be pretty straight with you guys. I do enjoy the scent on the cream. I do not enjoy the scent on the clay. The coffee scent on the matte clay just didn't jive well with me. I don't think it really had anything to do with my allergies or anything like that, I just really didn't think it was a good scent choice. That has nothing to do with performance, obviously, and I don't judge the entire product based on that because that would be stupid, but that's just how I feel on the scent. I do think the cream is pretty nice though. It's a little strong, but overall it's not a bad scent. But my final thoughts here is that both of these products weren't bad at all. I do have to say, I think the cream is more of a pomade than a cream, which I think was what they were going for here, unless I'm mistaken. I think it styles pretty well. It's very slick and easy to style with. I think the endurance might be my only criticism of it, but compared to others, that's not the worst thing. I really felt like this one reminded me a lot of the products from Templeton Tonics, specifically his pomades, the ones with that spongy slick consistency and that good helping of shine. It reminded me a lot of that. The clay too, I thought was very interesting. For me, it didn't have a ton of hold, but it was very thick in the hair. So it works kind of like a less thick and less holding ocean clay, which obviously makes it not quite comparable because ocean clay is much thicker and has more hold than this matte clay that I think anyway, but I do feel like the consistency, the scoop and 
application is kind of similar. It's kind of in the ballpark. I never actually saw the matte finish there, but I do think it produced a good style and I was able to achieve what I wanted without much effort. As usual though, I leave it up to you guys to take the info I've presented here and form your own conclusions. If you'd like to check them out for yourself, Kinsfolk is offering a discount code for you guys to use at their site, which will be in the description if you're interested. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you drop me a like and a comment. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button for me as well. And with that, I will say thank you so much for stopping by the channel today and checking out this video. I'll be back with you guys again this coming week for an all new set of content. Take it easy. I'll see you next time.